the uh, teachers, the good fit students get to see what the teaching process is. And so shoving them in a corner to grade papers won't really give them, you know, the impact that actually standing up in front of a classroom and teaching a lesson or, or working with a struggling student and, and seeing them get that aha. That's usually the thing that catches teachers the most is having a student that struggles, but finally they finally get it. And it's just such a great moment for a teacher. And so having a student experience that when they're young, that's what kind of hooks them into teaching. You know, and I, I think the interesting thing when I was talking to the student intern, she also said that, you know, when she first thought she was getting into teaching, she thought it was going to be basically coming up with a lesson plan mm -hmm. and that everything else would just fall into place. Right. And then she realized, oh, but not everyone's going to behave like right. I think they should <laughs> behave. So I think it's an eye opener for yeah. them as well. It really is. And, and one of the hardest things that an administrator would have to do is to counsel someone who should not be in the teaching profession out of the teaching profession. This gives them an opportunity to see if it's really what they want to do. A lot of times, you know, they may think it's something that I'll fall into or, or if this doesn't work out, I'll become a teacher. Um, but this really gives them an opportunity to, to determine if teaching is, is something that they want to do with their lives. And you had said, Glenn, that, or you had said, Patricia, actually, that um, it doesn't cut into your budget, and, but, but the students do get paid, correct, right. Glenn? So how does that work? Absolutely. Um, in this particular program, we began with a grant from the state, which was a wonderful grant, mm -hmm. supported similar kinds of workforce development and economic development programs across the state. Mm -hmm. uh, if you know what the state budget is, uh, that's gone away, but we have had uh, private foundations and individuals step forward to provide a stipend for these students. So here you have students who are trying to get through a, a traditional college curriculum, which is pretty rigorous. Uh, they got textbooks, transportation, food, toiletries. Some of those things can be picked up with Pell Grants and other, but sometimes that just doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. It's an incentive. It makes them feel like they're earning money. In rural communities or in urban settings where money's kind of tough to come by, that little bit of stipend is enough to help nurture them through this process. And it makes them feel like an employee. And we yeah. hold them to that responsibility, right. by the way. And they don't get the money until they complete the semester, correct? Exactly. They and not only complete the semester, but they do it with adequate grades. They do it with positive recommendations from their teacher. It gives the principal a chance to look at them. And we move them around. So don't get too comfortable at, at this particular school because we may move you to a middle school right. and let you have that experience. We move you to another elementary school. And that's the other part of this growing process. A lot of times they don't know, middle, high school, mm -hmm. elementary school. Yeah. So we move them around, get that experience. How much is the stipend? It's $750 for the student. Mm -hmm. And then we also pay the host teacher because again, they're providing the oversight, the evaluations and so forth. And it's a nominal amount, about $150 or so. Um, but for the teachers, the real benefit is having those hands on, mm -hmm. watching the ahas come from that, that uh, prospective teacher as well as them and having the extra hands on deck. I mean you can imagine a science lab with 22 middle schoolers you know having the extra set of hands is a good thing. Yeah and for the student I mean I remember when I was in college I just wanted experience right. you know you didn't even have to pay me so it's probably not all about the money though it helps but um, I'm sure just getting that experience is invaluable. And you know really the good fit idea came from a student who wandered into the Dean's office one day and said you know I got into this profession because I wanted to work with kids. And you know, I haven't seen a kid. And we said, aha, hmm, we Maybe need we to fix that little problem. So that's the other. It was student driven on both sides, the needy students as well as our college students saying, give me a shot at this. Let me see what it's all about. Right. All right, Glenn Thomas and Patricia Hodge, um, both with FAU, uh, Assistant Dean and also Principal Director of FAU Lab Schools uh, on the FAU campus. We're going to talk more with you all in just a couple of minutes, but coming up in the next segment, we're going to hear from some of these student interns what it's like being in the classroom. So stay with us here on Eye on South Florida. Welcome back to Eye on South Florida, and we are talking today about a specialized program at FAU that has actually joined forces with Palm Beach Community College 
to put more teachers and student teachers into the classroom. And joining us now are two of those student teachers. They are Sharla Burns and Michael Lawler. And you all have both been in the program for at least a year, maybe a couple of yes. years. Mm -hmm. So Michael, let's start with you. You're at Glade Central High School right now where you are um, teaching students in a specialized reading program, yes. correct? What is that all about? That's, that's very exciting, mm -hmm. actually. The class that I have this semester, mm -hmm. the host teacher actually has had to decrease her students because since the program started, this is actually my second semester in that particular classroom. They put me back in that same class because the last semester that I was in there, mm -hmm. the teacher had so many improvements that almost half of her class passed the FCAT. It's actually a FCAT reading prep program. Oh. And so the teacher had so many improvements in her class that half of her class actually passed the FCAT, so they were excluded from that class and they went on to better, better classes. So that's very, it's very exciting working with the students. You get to learn how to interact with different people from different cultures. You get to learn as much from the students as, as they learn from you. So it's, it's very positive. And you made a difference. Yes, yes. You know, I mean, you actually helped improve some of their scores. Yes. So uh, you had said you were at Glade Central. This is your second time at Glade Central yes, High yes. School um, through this program. So they were like, Michael, can you please come back? Yes. Is that what they said? <laughs> yes, yes. Actually, I was looking forward to going back to work mm -hmm. with my teacher because she's a very, very great teacher. I love having her as my host teacher. Tell me specifically what you do. What's an average day for you at the in the classroom? An average day in the classroom is usually, usually once the students come in, they have sustained silent reading for about 15 minutes. And after that, they go into the lesson, which is usually working on a worksheet together, maybe a, a reading packet, mm -hmm. and where they go through a story and they have the read, think, and explain questions. And we go through all of the questions together. Mm -hmm. and. The, the different thing that I try to do with the students is I try to allow them to answer the questions and then it, even, either, even if it's a, a, a multi, multiple choice question, I try to allow them the chance to give me an answer why. Because it's easy to just pick an answer. But if you can tell me why you have the answer, then it's, you'll have a better chance of passing the FCAT. But they, because that's, all, that's, that's really what the program is about. The, at least in that particular school, mm -hmm. that program, the reading program in that school, is trying to help the students go ahead and pass the FCAT test. So the they can deductive move on. reasoning is very important. Well, you sound like a teacher, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But I guess that's the goal, right? Yes, yes. All right, so Sharla, let's talk a little bit about you because, um, you know, this program was something that was, that, that's been offered to, to, to students at Palm Beach Community College as mm -hmm. well, not just FAU. Um, and how did you hear about it? Well, actually, I was in the reading lab doing some work, and Miss Wallace, uh, one of the ladies that are over the uh, program, mm -hmm. she came to me and she was like, well, have you heard of Good Film? Good Film? I was like, no. <laughs> and then she introduced me to the program and told me what the program was all about. And I felt like that, you know, maybe I should give back to the community what they did to me. So. And why is it so important um, going through college and being able to actually do what you're going to be doing as your career? How, how valuable is that? It's very valuable because, I mean, the education that you get from college is going to help you a long way. When, once you get that job, and this program really does that for you, especially with trying to major in education, mm -hmm. that program you can be in mm -hmm. into going into the um, business world. And Did stuff. you have an idea of what it would be like to be a teacher before you got into this program? I mean, did you have sort of an idea of what it would be like to be in the classroom? And, and how has that changed now that you're in the classroom? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, the teachers, I, I had no idea how much work they put into when it came down to their classrooms. I mean, for, uh, when they, as soon as school are finished, mm -hmm. they plan outlines for their students so, you know, they can get ready for the next day or the next week. And I mean, they spend long hours just for their students to be successful. And I thought that was like, wow. Yeah, <laughs> I think a lot of people have an idea, you know, that teachers, they're out at 3 o'clock. That you know they go home. Mm -hmm. You know they're out all the all the holidays, no. out all summer. You know, Michael, and you you can attest to that that that's not the case. That's definitely not the case. Actually, my teacher is there, seven o'clock.
on between 7 and 7.30 every morning, and she's working. She Every day she changes her whole whiteboard. Mm -hmm. Everything is changed. She puts her new schedule up for the day. Everything that's that's going to be done in that, in that day, mm -hmm. she has an outline for each class. So it takes a, definitely a lot of work. And even on 